Hey there everybody and welcome back to more Rule of Rose. So we finished off all three of our stories and rather oddly the prince is no longer here. So I guess we are free to leave this room and maybe get back to exploring the airship. Abruptly, we find ourselves taken out of the airship by what appears to be the man that was giving us stories before. As to why he took us out of the airship, or where we are right now, is a little bit of a mystery. We're not actually sure at this point if that man is someone we should fear or not. Without any other place to go, I suppose we just have to follow him. And rather oddly, we find ourselves at what the game calls the Gingerbread House. If we examine the nearby mailbox, we actually find out the name of the gentleman. His name is Gregory Wilson. We have not heard that name before, and as such we still have no idea who he might be. Does he have some connection with the orphanage? Kind of hard to say. But before we head into the house, I just want to take a quick detour off to the right hand side here. For there is a new item in the garden waiting for us. Over here by these many holes, we do find a new weapon, the shovel. It's got basically the range of the pipe, but it does do a little bit more damage. Let's hope we don't have to wield it in this particular chapter. Without further ado, let's go ahead and head inside and maybe explore this gingerbread house. strange of a vision. I assume that was Gregory, but I don't know. The tint and tone of it seemed to say something of sadness. Now by going into this small adjoining room here, it does seem initially empty, but the back window is open. That actually allows us to hop out onto the porch that was actually blocked off to us. It also allows us access to, to another open window. <laughs> now, 
inside we find a rather decaying room full of toys. There's not much of interest in here except for this tiny airship. Also, besides that airship, there is a rather hard to see newspaper under this chair. And the article that draws Jennifer's attention most is an unexplained series of disappearances from almost a year ago. They were apparently the disappearance of some local children, and there were quite a few of them. Now, as to what this has to do with this particular house, well, the first assumption that comes to mind is the fact that this could very well be the house of whoever was kidnapping those children. I mean, from the outside, the, this particular room was completely barred and barricaded up. It seems kind of odd for a grown man to have a bunch of children's toys lying around. <laughs> Also, there just seems to be something about the man's behavior that seems just a bit off. Big peas, small peas, every which kind of pea. Okay. But there is not too much in the lavatory except the bathtub. On Wednesday. And if we examine it, we find that well, the bathtub seems to have almost a bloodish hue. Kicks and screams. Perhaps he had murdered a bunch of children in there after he kidnapped them. On Saturday, he buries the pea. Or perhaps it's just rust. The pea is in the But as we head into the basement, the voice we were hearing upstairs slowly grows louder and louder. Come Thursday, the pea kicks and screams. Come Friday, he grinds up the pea. Come Saturday, he buries the pea outside. The pea is in the ground. And by Sunday, it can't be found. Good night, young P. Good night, young P. Stray dog walks the streets each day, collecting peas as he walks to and fro. Big peas, small peas, every which kind of pea. Come Monday, he finds a pea. Come Tuesday. Again, he refers to us as Joshua, and he locks us up in this basement bedroom. 
by searching a little bit, we find in a nearby crib a set of letters. And by reading these letters, we actually find that Wendy has had some correspondence with probably some previous occupant of this room. And with each correspondence, we see that Wendy starts to refer to, well, Joshua as something of her prince, and that she will be his princess. That someday she will come and free him from whatever craziness this rather uncouth gentleman has done. And all he has to do is pledge his undying love to Wendy. But what stands out most is the final letter. Because these words seem to be very familiar. Something else of interest is the covered bed here. If we proceed to look under the covers, find a rather familiar empty set of clothes. They seem to look very much like the clothes of the prince that's been hounding us throughout the entire game. And for some reason, though, it affects Jennifer very heartily. Did we know the boy that was here? Did we visit this place with Wendy? Kind of hard to say. But let's go ahead and investigate this cabinet. Seems, seems like the door is a bit stuck. Let's try again. Well, third time has to be the charm. Yeah, the entire point of that was to knock down this teddy bear. Thankfully, Wendy has managed to find us. She's managed to get off the airship, find this gentleman's house, and now she's going to come down and free us. Quite a stroke of luck, I must say. Or maybe she forgot about us. No, it just takes quite a bit of time for young Wendy to make her way stealthily through this man's house. But with the door unlocked, we can now silently make our escape. Lord only knows what this kidnapper would do if he caught Wendy in here with us. Well, I think we should get out of here as quickly as possible. Wendy seems dead set on finding this dangerous object. I'm not really sure what that could be. Before we talk to her, there's actually a little hidden diary over here. And with it, we're actually going to learn a little bit more about Gregory Wilson's life. Now, I'm going to be flipping through this rather quickly, mostly because all it tells us is that Gregory is more or less just a simple farmer. That garden we saw over to the right-hand side of the house is how he makes a living for he and his son, Joshua. 
So I guess he's not a kidnapper at all, even though... I guess this Joshua that he talks about could just be something he made up in his mind. He doesn't really seem totally there in his head. So he could still very well be dangerous. But, if anything, we can garner that he's had a very repetitive and quiet life. But before we follow Wendy, there is one more thing on this gentleman's desk. His quite disorganized and disheveled desk. But the thing that draws our attention most is a particular picture frame. For in that picture frame houses a picture of Gregory and his son Joshua. So I guess he wasn't lying. And I guess we can assume now that well, he really didn't kidnap anybody. Maybe instead he had his son kidnapped. Or his son had been kidnapped. But we can't really think about that now. We should probably just try to escape as quickly as possible. <laughs> 